The other really great thing about live loops is it allows us to create what are called multi-threaded programs. And we don't really need to worry about what that means. Essentially, it's just when we have more than one thing going on at once in our composition. But if you think about the programs we've written so far, everything is kind of run in order from the top to the bottom. Say we wanted to do this kind of simple melody. The program is just going to start at the top and run the first command and when it's done doing that it's going to do the second command and then it's going to do the third command and it's going to do the fourth command and it's just going to keep running through in a list from the top to the bottom now that's good for some kinds of composition often though we want to maybe do slightly more complicated things maybe have two loops running at the same time that would be the first thing we'd start to do if we were working on logic or one of these computer composition programs that looks a little bit different to sonic pi we'd be sort of dragging and dropping samples into different tracks and we'd want to have different things running together to create a composition. We can do exactly the same thing in Sonic Pi by creating multiple live loops and connecting them together. And I'm going to show you how to do that now. It's really easy to get started with this. First of all, we're going to create a live loop that's going to be our beat. And I'm going to give this a name of beat. So it's very easy to remember. Don't forget every live loop we create needs to have its own name so that the system knows which live loop is which. And I'm going to do the same thing I did before, which is to play a sample of a bass drum. So play sample BD, which one do we have this time? Let's go with BD Pure. I don't know what that sounds like. We'll show sure it'll be good. And we're going to sleep for half a beat. And that's going to be our basic pattern. Now what I'm going to do is instead of just repeating the loop over and over again I'm going to play this eight times and I'll show you why in a moment but I'm going to do one of these iteration loops which means that we're going to play our bass drum eight times. So it's going to take four seconds for this loop to be completed because we're going to be running this loop which takes 0.5 seconds of time eight times and so that's going to last for four seconds. Let's, let's have a listen to that. Great, now the composition could carry on forever. It would carry on playing our live loop of our bass drum for us. But say we wanted to add something else to that. Say I wanted to play a sample over the top of this live loop. Now, if I was using the loop command from before, we'd never be able to do this because if I'd have done this, say, if I'd have got rid of that and got rid of that, we'd never be able to write anything down here because that loop would just keep running forever and we'd never see any information on line eight. We'd never get to this line. But if we do the live loop thing, we can. And that's where this thing gets really powerful. So say I want to write another live loop, which is going to play a sample. So I'm going to call this my sample and write end there. And I'm going to choose a sample from the various options. Let's choose ambi dark whoosh that's always a good one and let's say sleep for two seconds fine the clever thing about this is that we can now play those two things together and they're happening essentially independently of each other they're just going round and round we can even add that in at some point during our performance when we're ready to do so. Let's have a look at that. So I've started my beat, beat up here. Now when I want to run my second loop, I just have to put that into the program as well and click run again. And say I wanted to change this sample. I quite like the ambi piano from the last one. That was quite good. So put that in here and we can run it again. And so here we can see two loops running independently of one another. And this is the key cornerstone of our live coding composition because we can be changing one loop, one part of the composition, while leaving the rest all running and we'll never notice uh, that those two things are happening. It might not look it, but we've done something pretty complex there in terms of software development. We're running more than one thing at once in our program, and Live Loops allows us to do all of that complexity without there being that much complexity in our program, which is really good. The other thing we might want to do is connect Live Loops together so that one Live Loop starting to play triggers another one. And so I'm going to do that now. I'm going to use my beat 
loop up here at the top to trigger this, this my sample loop that I've got at the bottom. And so I'm going to get rid of my sleep command here. Now that might seem really, really crazy because before we've, we've always seen programs go wrong where there have been loops without any kind of sleep in them because they just run and run forever. But we're going to do something slightly special here in our live loop. We're going to sync it with the beat loop. And so we're only going to hear this ambi dark whoosh every time the beat loop goes back to the beginning. And you'll notice that we're doing eight times of our bass drum before we go back to the beginning and repeat that again. So we should hear the ambi dark whoosh sample run once every eight beats of the bass drum. Let's see if that works. And that's a really interesting thing that's changed here is that we're now triggering the my sample loop by just the fact that we've got to the beginning again of the beat loop. And there we go, we're hearing this ambi dark whoosh coming once every eight beats on the bass drum. And the, the nice thing is I can change this, of course. So let's say I choose something a little bit more rhythmic. The Ambi Piano one was quite good because it had a certain rhythmic quality to it. And we can hear that maybe a bit better. We should hear this after every eight bass drum hits. There we go. So five, six, seven, eight, piano five, six, seven, eight, piano. And so even though there's no sleep element at all in this loop, it doesn't really matter because we're just playing it every time we get to the beginning of this loop up here at the top. And that's a really exciting thing because now we can start to connect and trigger other samples with um, a, a maybe a beat loop that's going on underneath it or just an interesting combination of elements in the music. And so with this knowledge, the fact that we can use live loops to create sounds that change on the fly and that we can link them together and sync them up in interesting ways, we're actually ready to go and have a look at that composition we saw right at the beginning of the course and we should understand pretty much how it all works. So let's go and have a look at that now.